as you can tell. Um, we're going through Zoom because life has been life and we've been busy in doing our thing. I was in Queensland for a family holiday and wedding. And then Aisha was away um, doing some beautiful work in Queensland. And um, I think I landed and you took off the same day. Yeah, we, we pretty much did. We were avoiding each other. We're like, fuck, mate. Too much we're hanging out lately. 100%. 100%. But we're connected through technology. Right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, all right. So, look, today we're going to talk about a topic based around dreaming big and actioning small. So, basically... Do you dream big but don't have the courage or you don't believe in your energy or the energies around you to achieve the dreams you are actually wanting to achieve? Um, so I think I thought it was a really good topic. So I was listening to a podcast the other day talking about bucket lists. Mm. I just some of these things on this bucket list. Were. Um, one of them was you know, playing basketball with Obama. And just, <laughs> yeah, and just wild shit. Yeah. And, um, and I thought I found it amusing, but also I found it like it's a, it's a, it was a lighthearted way of, you know, um, I, think, I think chasing something that can be very daunting for people, you know, their dreams and what they admire to be or achieve in their life. Yeah. So true, man. Um, I love that when you brought this topic up because when we're discussing about what we're going to talk about and you said that, I said, oh, gosh, that's, it's such a um, pattern people are actually stuck in, yeah? So who doesn't want a big desire or an, a magical desire or something that sort of like excites them? But all of us do, right? We always want to expand yes. and we all, always want to grow. And um, But then it's so true, like when you look at like the actions, the belief, um, you know, the, the behaviours, the thought patterns, and the choices, right? Yeah. I reckon a majority of us um, are not aligning those things with the big desire and the dream, you know, um, I think because a big part of that is letting go of what you know and letting go of the comfort of having certain things um, afraid to lose what you are used to, I think. So that also comes into play. Like you might have, um, you know, gained some level of comfort and you're used to that and the fear comes like, okay, so I might have to drop down a little bit in order to get this bigger thing. Am I prepared for that little bit of a drop? And I think that's where most people are like, ah, like, yeah, I want that dream, but I'm also feeling safe and comfortable here. So I'm not going to take that. Yeah. Uh, you know, look at your life. Like I know you bought a beautiful home recently and, you know, it should excite you and scare you at the same time. It's a funny feeling, isn't it? Like it, should, it should be like, fuck, but fuck, you know, like it should be both. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Otherwise, Going back on what you just touched then about, you know, um, stepping out of your comfort zone, especially recently, I've been very comfortable you know, mm. like having, say, not having a mortgage, debt, whatnot, and um, basically being debt free. I was very comfortable, and and now, but at the same time, our desires, our dreams have always been to do what we're doing right now by purchasing a family home and. And whatever and it is very exciting but at the same time i'm stepping out of the comfort zone and i was speaking to Jess, and Jess was very nervous so it was funny how you can be achieving what you dream to achieve but also comes with a level of discomfort mm -hmm. exactly it so comes the same level of discomfort with it so nervousness anxiousness are we going to be able to do it and then you have decisions to make yeah Hundred percent. You, you can let the the fear or the discomfortness consume you completely, or you can basically take it head on and push through and use a different type of energy, mm. um, which is like an energy of confidence, knowing what you're capable of, 
having your own back, backing yourself. Mm. Absolutely. And I, and I reckon too that um, there's a very, very thin line between being nervous and excited, like yeah. really, and it sort of fluctuates between both, right? Because think about it, if you you need a little bit of that nervous, excited energy in order to go, okay, I want the next next level or I want to tap into that next level, yeah. right? Because you already got this level down. You know, five years ago, this was the, oh, my God, it's scary and I'm nervous and excited, this, where you're at now, right? You you had that same feeling when you said, hey, when I wanted to start a business, I wanted to do this, I want to invest in that. You had that already. When you then are sort of mastering that level and stuff, it it also loses that charge and it becomes your next base level, yeah? yeah. So I feel like it's very important to have um, those stepping stones. Some people just want to take bigger leaps, right? And that's cool too, but you've got to match it. Like it's like, okay, I really desire that. And look at look at what you purchased. You, It's an amazing thing, but that amazing thing, you have to match with your amazing everything else. Yeah. Like, you know, yourself practices, um, what you choose to say yes to, what you choose to say no to, what you have to let go of and what you have to now call in. And I feel like, you know, people don't realise that. It's like, you know, it is it is both a um, like a something you desire and something you put emotion and you put imagination to, but then your actions, your behaviours, your thoughts, your choices have to match to that level of desire. Mm -hmm. And what do you reckon? Like, do you think a lot of people are prepared for that? Mate, I think, I think a lot of, look, I think a lot of people don't want to sacrifice in any way, any much, um, like and and, and short term sacrifice, right? Like a little dip. Like that, that's what oh, I was saying. It's, it's, like it's, like a, it's like a dip. You might have to. You feel like you're going backwards, but you're not. It's just a well, redirection. Hundred percent. Like the way the, the way I put it to me, for myself to accept and understand is how you said levels. For example, right when we want to level up. So yeah, five years ago, where I am today, for example, is that was daunting. Well, that was a, a, a big step. Thing. Man, big step. For me, it, was like, it felt like a mountain, right? Or, or mm-hmm. a lot of hard work, headache, a lot of um, stress and whatnot that comes along with it. But now what happens is I find that you take that step, you take some time to integrate, get your foot, adjust. So I'm giving myself two years of adjustment period, for example, mm-hmm. right? So in my head, I'm like, yes, there's sacrifices, but... I see the future a lot brighter. I see what, let's say, 24 months of sacrifice will bring for 20 years of living and bring towards the family, mm. things like that. So you, you do calculate it. You've got to still make a calculated decision. Um, yeah, absolutely, especially when you do have family. Of course, 100%, because at the end of the day, you know, things like that, we live in a 3D world where all that's real you know, financial stress and whatnot. And you've got to still make smart decisions. Um, and still, when you do put, you know, dream of something, you still have to calculate that dream. Yeah. I can't, I can't be like, all right, uh, next week, I'm going to go sit with Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And be on her show or something. Next week, yeah. you're like, that, that's just not realistic enough. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, 100%, I feel like when there is a levelling up, it takes, you know, whether it's leveling up in energy, leveling up in the 3D world and all that, you have to then integrate. Yeah. Yeah, Give absolutely. Give yourself that time to adjust, get used to, to what your new normal is going to be. Yep. Then start taking off again. Yep, thousand percent. And I think, I think you were so spot on in saying that when you make these sort of decisions to like level up and go to, you know, and sort of, do a bucket list thing or do something that you always yeah. wanted to do, but it is a little bit bigger than you sort of are comfortable with at the moment. I think a great thing to do is set up your environment to support the new that you need to become. 
Mm. Right. So, so, you know, people think like meditation and all that stuff is only for like, oh, if you want to be spiritual and sit on top of a mountain. No, no, it actually did. It isn't. It's actually a practice that helps you relate to life and reality so much better. So it's like, say you have this amazing big dream or whatever, and you are, you know, wanting to pursue it and put yourself out there. And imagine if it's a person who's meditating, so their mind is clear, they've got inspired action, they're um, also, you know, uh, not as reactive, they're not emotional buyers, they're more like, okay, they're looking at it from a, you know, a, a more expansive perception and stuff. So you literally are still doing those bigger things, and but you're setting yourself up to the best of your ability, which is like you are also um, including the other facets of who you are. So like you practice like, okay, you know, you think about, okay, if I, if I can sort of tolerate the emotional, emotional pull that can happen better, that means even if I choose this decision, I'm still going to be okay. I'm still going to be, it's not going to cost me my health. It's not going to cost me fighting with my family at home, you know? So I think like those things are important too. It's like, you've got to give yourself the best opportunity to stabilize yourself, grounding yourself, being you know, you know, strengthening all of you so that, hey, when you are going for that bigger thing, you're actually well prepared. You know, you are understanding, hey, I'm going to mentally have to step back a little bit, give up here or take on a little bit more load here so that in two years time, that's one way. That's your mindset. You know, you're prepared, right? Then you're also prepared that, hey, you know what, with my practices, I'm not as reactive. I'm not going to chase something or be pulled towards something out of an emotional attachment to something. So I feel like, you know, you really have to set an environment internally and externally with the support of your family if you've got kids and and wife and a husband that, yeah, we can chase this thing, but let's also do the grounding work around it so that if things sort of go here, there, you're already sort of at a good, like a, a, at a good place. Do you know what I mean? Because in order to chase something big and you don't have those foundation and something goes wrong, it's, it can become very, very scary and messy and you can literally drop really fast. 100%. I agree. It's, it's basically um, in a way like sharpening the, your tools before you get to work type thing. Yeah. And making sure yeah. that you're, you're ready to rock and roll and to take on, you know, uh, whatever is, it comes with what, what you're trying to do. Um, and I think the, the main thing comes down to um, that you touched on just before is, you know, setting up your, the right environment for you it comes from people needing to understand part of uh, sacrifice and, and doing all that type of stuff means people are going to come and go in your life. Oh. Um, you know, yeah. especially if, if you see, you know, not like through through history and through many other people, you can read books and, and watch you know, podcasts about successful people and they'll tell you the same, I guess, when, when you learn off them is that a lot of um, the, the way they, they achieve where they're heading to is because their friends change, for example, their friends list drops off, they hang out with, they spend energy with other type of people, people who already done their, done what they're trying to achieve, already been there um, and so forth because you know, when you're aware of, of the way the energy works in this world, we know that, you know, if you're trying to achieve something, but you've got 10 people around you, not wanting, not believing in you, not giving you the right positive um, attitude. And, and to doesn't, it's going to be doesn't very even have, yeah, and doesn't even carry your own, the similar values and similar sort values, of yeah. and drive in life, you know, even motivation in life, it, it, it impacts you. Because it puts yes. doubt in your mind, right? Because if they're scared, if they're scared, and you want to, you've got a big dream. Well, that fear, they'll be like, "Oh my god, how are you going to do this? And what are you going to do?" And it's like, and um, you're absolutely right. Like, it's so important about even the people that you're around. Because what happens, and going back to saying, you know, being prepared and doing the meditation, 
doing your breath work, doing all of, all of these things that prepare you so you don't get shaken when you do have, I, I don't want to really call them naysayers because they're not doing it with harm. They just don't, they're just not at that level yeah, with yeah. you. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So they're not. They're not trying to harm you in any way. They're just not at that at that level. So for them, it doesn't make sense. To That's right. It doesn't do, make right? sense. Yes. But so at the same time, you need to do all these practices that I find that your meditation, like just before you jumped on Zoom, I, I did a 15, 20 minute lie down on my own, did my meditation, and all that purely was was envisioning the house, the kids playing in the pool. Jesse and I working happy, um, sunny days and whatnot, and just basically bringing some calm. Yeah, exactly. Does that exactly. Make sense? So that that there removes for me removes sense of fear and it brings a calming feeling and a more stable, solid ground. Actually, grounding your vision. Grounding it's it. It's grounding yeah. it. It's like okay, it's not going to be there. It's here. I can feel it. I can envision yeah. it. It's here. And so, yeah, it's it's very very important. And I I, I remember a video you sent me with that. Um, what's his name? Steve Harvey, and yeah. he and he and he put out a really amazing analogy. He said, you know, if you look at a rocket ship when it goes when it goes up in the air, like there's so many attachments to it and it shoots up. But as it gets higher and higher and higher, so it's like the vision gets higher and higher and higher bits and pieces start to detach and drop off, right? Because you can't take that attachment up to that level of um, in the environment, you know? So if you look at it to the level that we're growing, some people are just not ready and they're not meant to come with you to those levels. And it's okay. Like it's okay, um, you know? And so I feel like that's an important thing to realize that not everything that you have, and it doesn't just mean people, it means it means. Uh, relationships, it could be circumstances, it could be your maybe, you know, in order to get to a certain level, maybe you have to give up certain habits, you got to give up certain patterns. And it's like things have to fall away in, for, in order for you to sort of be able to. I mean, a big part of reaching that level, honestly, is letting go of a lot of fear. You know, fear of what you have now, fear of the unknown, um, attachment to what you have, what's comfortable, the people around you. I mean, a lot of it, so many people hold back because of what they already have, you know, and so their 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 want doesn't align with their actions and that's why they're always in conflict, yeah. They're always like, oh, I want that, but uh, I want that. And they're like the ones that sit there and, Oh, they're a little bit complaining and stuff because complaining, procrastinating. Yeah, because exactly because the dream is here and their you know beingness and what they're doing and choices are, are not matching. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you don't have to have that. Yet for some people, a simple, beautiful, amazing life is their joy. Right. And so so that to them is peace. And then they're they're also happy here. And that's why they're not complaining, because they're like, no, this is my thing. This is my this is my elevated, expansive, expansive what I want out of life. You don't have to play basketball with Obama. You know, not everybody no wants to do that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. So your bucket list can be something that is so, so, so grounded in the now. And it can be like, I just want a home with my kids in the backyard with a trampoline and a pool. And I feel so amazing. Right. And if their choices, behaviors and action environment matches that, mate, they already got it. They yeah. already got it. You don't have to have, you know, Steve job level friggin' I want that to the moon, you know, and it's a choice that everybody can make, but I think the point we were making is just understand that if you have a certain dream, if you have a certain level of desire, your beliefs, your environment, your actions, your, your letting go, your choices, what you do daily, your tools, everything has to align with that. Exactly, yeah. 100%, I agree. All those things have to align in order for your energy level to be where it needs to be to mm -hmm. achieve things in your life. 110% agree with you, Ash. Yeah. Yeah. And like it's, it's, and that, and you know what, even if like sort of like, and then, and then, so what happens is you're not so focused on the timing because you're not desperate. 
you're always just refining yourself for that dream and and then you enjoy the process, you enjoy the journey. Yeah, you, you remove a lot of stress. Spot on, spot on, spot on. Because the time is not in our hand, it's more the preparation part. We prepare ourselves, we make the choices. So I think it's a really good thing for like a lot of the fighters, right? Like think about it, they have these big desires and dreams and then you have to see, okay, with, when they're training, they're in it. Outside of that, are they making choices, decisions, behaviours, yeah. thought patterns that align to their dream? You know, you'd be able to really notice that, right? 100%, yeah. 100%. If you've got people working hard here and sparring and training, but then they're outside getting pissed, eating shit food, hanging around people that don't believe in them or don't believe one day they're going to be a champion or whatever their dream is, Mm. Of course, they're never going to get it. It's going to reflect back on them eventually in the gym, in their fights and whatnot. And when you see through, say, the fight game, when you look at your, your people who, who talk the talk and achieved it, your Conor McGregor's, your Muhammad Ali's, your, you know, those type of people, what they were in the gym, they were living outside the gym, the same thing. You know what it's I mean? Awesome. And you see them start with a certain coach or whatnot and over time change and people get pissed off. They don't realise that, hey, sometimes a certain group of people or certain amount of energy can only get you so far. Yeah, and And it's okay. It's okay to move on, find something, else find a new energy that's going to help you get to where you need to be. You know what I mean? And, And you see that a lot in, I think, athletes when they leave certain teams and whatnot. Um, yep. on the big stage and, and that's what it is they might not feel that they they have got the energy in them around them what they need to achieve they need a change of people around them change of scenery whatever to then yep. fire them up and, and get that new level of energy in their in their system to get going again Got on so what would you say to someone who like say someone came to you and said hey i've got this big vision and i want to do this like just Imagine it's like a fighter or someone just just even starting a family life and saying, I want to create a business, I want to do this, I want to do that. Where do I start? How do I get the confidence? How do I cultivate this thing that will match my dreams and desire? Well, like, What would you say to that person? The first thing I would ask them is what emotion do they, do they receive from that thought? Because if it's nothing, if everything else but happiness – I'll tell them to not even think about it because then they're going to spend time, which we don't really control, right? They're going to spend all that chasing something that they might achieve and one day wake up and go, I'm not happy. Mm. So I think for people, they've got to really sit with it and go over it, dissect it, flip it, cut it open, calculate it and go, is this my true happiness? Is this where I really find my happiness? Wow. And if it's yes, then the next step would be believe in yourself and trust in yourself more than anyone can. Don't think your coach should believe in you more. Don't think Mm -hmm. your wife, your partner, your husband should believe in you more. You've got to believe in yourself more than anyone. Because then you're externalizing that power. You're you're putting it like in someone else's or something else's hand. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. If you're looking for recognition in, in things that are outside of you, right? To 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 justify what you're trying to do. You're gonna you're gonna be chasing your tail, I think, for a long time. Yeah, um, and I think have- I think too. It, it, really, something doesn't end up happening because it's actually you that ends up saying no more. So even though the coach can say, "Come on, come on, come on," really, it does come down to your own yes or no. Your your own will to do what you want to do. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, definitely, I would start with that. Like. You know, even in here, you've got people come in. When the UFC thing took off, we had young guys walk in, young guys and girls, and be like, "I'm going to want to be a UFC champion." Mm. And you can you can see that they don't actually understand what it takes to even get a quarter of the way there, or even get to their first fight, amateur fight, right? So you don't. At the same time, you don't crush them. You don't say "ha ha" and laugh in their face and go. Yeah, mate, you're dreaming. You sound like every other guy who's watched a couple of UFC fights, right? But what you do is you take them on board, try to give them the right energy, bring them into the right environment, and um, 
basically see, yeah, see what they're made of through there and you start coaching them and guiding them. And, um, and you know what, man, you'll be surprised. You know, you become surprised yourself as a coach that a lot of people that you thought would, wouldn't have anything in them actually surprise you because mm. you see them change. You see them evolve into great level up, keep going. And yeah, people you see two years ago that you think wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to step in the ring one day in the ring kicking ass. Yeah. Right? And then you see a confidence, you see an energy, a belief in them coming mm. from themselves. And, that, and I think that's, that's the difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the, the main thing is, is backing, backing yourself and knowing that, that if no one is around you to help. What are you doing then? What do you do then? It's all on you. Are you still going full steam ahead? Yeah. Or are you let fear start consuming and, and suppressing that high energy that you had. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think, man, your first point like was really, really, really powerful. I think that is the seed of this because like you said, where it will come down to days where you don't have a cheer squad, mm -hmm. you know, to go to that next level. Not everybody is going to be standing there and clapping for you and you'll have days where you feel like horrible. And I think it's only like your that seed of like why you started, that feeling of why you started. And like I said, it can be a different thing for people. I think that is such a such a huge thing because that is like becomes your why, you know, that becomes your why. And it has to be bigger than your fear. Has to. Has to. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, brother, thank you again for an amazing chat. No worries. You're, mate, you killed Next it. week we're back together again. Together next week. No, we are. Don't say hopeful. No, we are. We are, we are. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm actually worried because you might do something and I might go, Shh. Oh. You can do it the yeah. Um, no. no, sweet, man. This was a great chat. It was good to catch yeah. up again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. What, two weeks we haven't been, two or three weeks we haven't been together, I think. Yeah. So much has happened in, in, in life on both ends, mine and yours. So it's yeah. good to see that our energy, even when we're not next to each other, is it's still fine, working. brother. Yeah. The line's still working. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. Happy days. Happy days. I'll see you this week anyway. All right. Yeah. All right, man. And guys, please subscribe, share, leave comments. Um, and just um, the best thing you can do is obviously like our content and just share. And accept our Instagram invite when it comes through. Oh, oh, hello. Yeah, I haven't sent it yet. That's true. Oh. So content on. <laughs> Once we've got content on there, I'm sending Instagram invites. Do not ignore them like 95% of the people do. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, man. Peace out.